Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the 2020 Zero FXS. And at the end of this video, I'm going to tell you whether or not this motorcycle right here is a good buy or if you should be saying goodbye. One of my subscribers, Tyler, reached out and said, hey, I'd love for you to take this out and get your thoughts on this motorcycle. So, of course, I responded with absolutely, please, can we do that? So here we are. We're going to walk through some specs. I'll take you for a test drive, and then at the end, we'll get our final verdict and determine who this motorcycle is and is not for. Before we get going, if you could, please hit that like button. It helps my videos reach other people with similar mindsets to you and I. And if you enjoy this style content, I highly encourage you to hit that subscribe button. All right, let's get into it. Interestingly, whenever he bought this motorcycle new, he said it only came with that very front battery. The Zero FXS was offered with a modular style battery and a hole battery. Whenever you went with the modular style, you did save some weight, but your range was cut in half. But let's talk about the output ratings for this motor. This little system right here is putting down a scorching 29 horsepower. And yeah, that's pretty meager compared to a lot of the gas-powered engine options. But I tell you what's not is that torque output, 78 pound-foot. Those are some pretty impressive numbers. The brake up front is a 320 millimeter disc using J. Juan components like a caliper that's twin piston, as well as the master cylinder. Same deal out back, but we've got a 240 millimeter disc with a single piston caliper J. Juan. Getting into the suspension, we've got Showa. It's a 41 millimeter inverted fork that is fully adjustable, and these forks boast seven inches of travel. Rear suspension is fully adjustable as well and boasts nine inches of travel. You can see the adjustments are made here on the side panel underneath the seat and down there at the bottom of the spring. Zero FXS comes in from the factory with a wet weight of 251 pounds. That is super lightweight for a motorcycle on any capacity making this kind of power. And it's way more lightweight than Yo Mama. He said it! He said it! Seat height is a little bit on the higher side at 32.9 inches. For reference, I'm 6 foot 1. My jeans measure a 33-32. And this is how I fit on the bike. I've got my feet firmly planted on the ground and you could probably even adjust the rear suspension a little bit more to squat whenever you get on it so that you can firmly flat foot the bike a little bit better if you're on the shorter side. All right, let's do an exhaust clip right quick. You guys hear that? Yeah, no, me either. It's electric. It doesn't make any sound. But on that note, it's really good for hunters and anyone who doesn't want to draw a lot of attention to themselves. It is dead quiet. And I'm going to show you just how dead quiet it is with the test ride. So let's get into that. And welcome to the test ride portion of the video. Right now I am in a parking lot practicing with this machine as it is all new to me and I want to get to know it a little bit at low speed. Throttle response, where the brakes like to grab at before we get going here. And one more thing before we get going, I want to give a big thank you to Tyler. This is Tyler's motorcycle. Tyler, thank you so much for letting me borrow your Zero for one of my videos. It is truly, truly appreciated. And Tyler was curious if I could get his motorcycle to wheelie. He says that he's seen him do wheelies before and a few other videos. So I think I'm going to give that a try and we're just going to get that question out of the way right away so that we're not doing it at the end of the video. So question, does the Zero FXS wheelie? We're in sport mode right now. We're in a parking lot trying to be as safe as possible. Scoot back on the seat a little bit, cover that rear brake and... Yeah, she picks it up pretty easy. Uh, the throttle responsiveness is definitely there, but once you let off, you almost are going down immediately. We're gonna try that one more time. <laughs> yeah, wheelie's all right. Okay, that's good enough. Seating position on this is very, well, dirt bike-esque. It is a supermoto with the street wheels and tires, but it is essentially a dirt bike chassis. It is eerily quiet to ride. You don't hear anything aside from the motor rotating beneath you and your tires on the pavement. When I initially sat on it, I thought the pegs were up a little bit too high, but now that I'm sitting on it at a stop and I can see that my knees are able to grab the tank right here, I actually really like the seating position. I'm upright, neutral, no weird forward or rear bias. It gives me excellent control over the machine. And it moves out very well. You can see on my dash here, I don't know if you guys can read this, I hope so, there is output 
up here so you can see the power and torque side so as i twist the throttle those two are going to move up just like that my battery or my fuel range is over here you can see i've got 91 percent right now do real bikers wave at electric motorcycles oh yeah they do baby just the twist and go is really really cool i do miss being able to manipulate the gearbox uh and the act of shifting all together this is very bizarre one thing tyler mentioned that's really cool about his motorcycle is that you don't need any special type of in-home installation for the charging system it is just a 110 amp power outlet that you plug into and it plugs into the bike and charges it it does take a little while to get full charge i think it's somewhere around five hours to go from zero to 100 percent fully charged but the great news is that whenever you're asleep you're not riding your motorcycle probably so you can charge it while you sleep and you wake up and you've got a full charge every single time now if you forget to plug it in then you're kind of sol and that's when things get maybe hairy so it might not be a bad idea to keep some spare batteries sitting off to the side maybe you buy a couple from the, your zero dealer that might be something you can look into so the way this bike was sold was in two variations for 2020 on the fxs one of them was a 3.6 kilowatt option that gave you the modular battery and the other was a 7.2 kilowatt option which gave you the chungus battery the cool thing about the modular though is that you can cut out a lot of weight but you'll get about half the range as the trade-off speaking of range total range was 7.2 kilowatts or two 3.6 kilowatt batteries stuffed into the frame is about 100 to 110 miles around the city that does drop pretty significantly if you do any highway type of travel in fact it nearly halves it so you're going to get about 50 miles to 60 miles on the highway so if you're looking at the zero as a long distance commuter i'm going to advise that you don't do that I can see this being a really good option though for someone who just can't seem to figure out the friction zone. I know some people just cannot master that friction zone and the clutch and not being able to dump it and they get frustrated or they get scared and it turns them away from motorcycling. I see this as an option for those people now to come into the industry and feel comfortable without having to worry about that and it's extremely quiet so for those new riders that are intimidated by the sound of an engine which i'm sure those people are out there the electric power plant is probably the preferred option for those types of riders who are intimidated and at only 251 pounds this thing is so lightweight nimble flickable and approachable i'd say the only drawback is that tall seat height of nearly 33 inches i'm just maintaining 55 miles an hour right now on this back road and if i want to i can jump it up to 70 right there super quick super super zippy but that's probably to be expected whenever you're on a 250 pound motorcycle with 78 pound foot of torque here's a quick reference for one of my own motorcycles my mt10 463 pounds 80 pound foot of torque this bike 250 pounds 78 pound foot of torque nearly half the weight but the same amount of torque this thing moves like a bat out of hell off the line of course your top end is where you kind of suffer top speed somewhere around 100 miles per hour at most and that's just kind of maxing out the cvt that comes with the bike but it is a very precise machine so yeah at 70 miles per hour you can actually like watch the battery drain down but if you were using this as a city commuter where you're not exceeding speeds of say 50 miles per hour was the fastest you were ever going to get up to that would probably be the prime time location for this machine all right and this is about as far as i wanted to go now what i want to get you guys is a zero to 60 test with this machine all right so what's going to be really important for the zero to 60 test is going to be throttle control because it just wants to pick the front end up at low speed off the line so we're going to go from this crack right here make sure there's no one in our mirrors and three two one 60. <laughs> the front end was just kind of like searching on that 
but it definitely got there very quickly and there's no shifting so you seriously just twist and go really fun machine though I, I really am having a good time on this bike it's not as fun as a gas-powered motorcycle though bottom line you know if you're looking to replace your gas-powered bike with an electric bike it's not the same but it's very very similar because well obviously they're on two wheels but power delivery is different you can't manipulate the gearbox on this like you can with a gas-powered motorcycle that has a clutch and i think there's an interesting in-between area for these kinds of motorcycles and no it's not scooters it's actually the dct bikes from honda i've actually done a review on one of their dct motorcycles you can check that out right up here but i think that's an interesting bridge between gas and electric because the dct bikes are in fact fully automatic and they shift for you they do still have a gearbox and you can even switch it to be whatever the equivalent is of a motorcycle paddle shifter on the zero you don't have that and as far as i know on none of the motorcycles that are electric right now do you have that one final note i would like to mention that tyler brought up is this bike has been nearly maintenance free for him aside from having to put some new tires on which i don't even know if you can count that as general maintenance that's just replacing items that get worn out everything else though he said he has not had to service or address in any way so cost of ownership super low for electric power plants oh and another thing i can't believe i forgot about this with it being 99 degrees out here today an electric motorcycle stays cool there's not a fire breathing engine between my legs it's all electric so whenever you're at a stop it's nice and cool you don't have all this heat rising up and hitting you and making you sweat and feel uncomfortable this bike is very confidence inspiring though it really makes you want to play around on it and it's really good for that it's a great little play bike or a city commuter again not a highway commuter and even just training practicing understanding how two wheels works this bike is great for all of those reasons and these j1 brakes work so good at stopping it it is very lightweight they shouldn't have an issue and they don't they're very precise and the brake feel is very good and you can really lean it I feel like I'm using a lot of the side of the tire right now. It's very, very enjoyable. As long as you look where you want to go, the bike will take you there. Practice throttle control, your rear brake. Oh man, just what fun this machine is. And then it just blasts off without making a sound it's so crazy and going up hills it's just got all the torque in the world so it just forces you up the hill all right little low speed maneuver right here in the middle of the road we're gonna just turn this old gal around look at that look at that tight turning radius that was sick wheelie <laughs> oh my days man that that is so fun all right i gotta get this thing back to tyler before i start getting too comfortable on it all right maybe one last wheelie just a little one Whoop. <laughs> the forks a lot of travel in those big dogs up there seven inches i think nine inches in the rear nearly haven't found the bottom yet all right so i just had a lot of fun with this machine couple areas where it really shines raw torque off the line efficiency it's dead quiet and it's very unintimidating to new riders plus it's got suspension and braking components to slow it down and bring it to a screeching halt which was very confidence inspiring for me especially being on a machine that i'm not familiar with i felt like i could have stopped in an emergency situation safely and very quickly it's comfortable and you don't have to pay for gas i would say for all of those reasons this bike is a good buy if you're looking for something that has a lot of range has maximum storage capability then you should probably be straying away from this motorcycle additionally if you like the raw feeling of an actual motorcycle and being able to manipulate the gearbox and have a little bit more connectivity or maybe you're very sound driven like i am with a motorcycle then in those instances I guess I would say for you, this bike is probably a good buy. All right, guys.
let's give this thing back to Tyler. Again, Tyler, thank you so very much for letting me borrow your Zero. It is truly appreciated. Let's cut to the outro. Hey everybody, welcome to the end of the video. Thank you so much for making it this far. If you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss whenever I upload in the future. And if you found this video helpful, informative, or entertaining, it would be super helpful for me and my channel if you left a like on it. I know my upload schedule has been a little bit weird, and the content I've been making has been all over the place, so I just want to take a second to say thank you for your patience and thank you for your continued support. I am now an affiliate for Foggy Garage, so if you guys want to get yourself some super sweet vintage motorcycle gear, you can check them out at foggygarage.com and use code OMNI10 for 10% off of your entire order at checkout. I don't have anything else to add, so I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much again for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day, and please, ride safe.